Uh, hi, my name is Stephanie Sprenger. I'm currently an assistant professor at the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT. Um, previously, I was a postdoc at the University of Chicago um, and also supported from the Irvington CRI Fellowship. Yeah, so the first thought that came to mind um, with this question really is that we understand much more about the suppressive compartments of the myeloid cells versus the immune stimulatory elements that we have. We, we often think of immune stimulatory elements occur mostly within the tumor draining lymph node, but actually I think today's session illustrated that we need it both in the lymph node as well as in the tumor to drive and maintain productive anti-tumor immune responses. And at the same time, we don't fully understand the features that determine whether myeloid cells, particularly dendritic cells, or B cells, in the case of tracheal lymphoid structures, maintain an instimulatory phenotype and actually are able to maintain productive T cell responses. So for the myeloid uh, section, I think the main takeaways are we need to look in the tumor. We need to understand better how the dendritic cells are spatially uh, organized within the tumor microenvironment and how those dendritic cells position themselves towards both the CD8 T cells, but also other cells like CD4 helper cells and regulatory T cells. And further, what we also need to understand is what are the determinants of either keeping the dendritic cells in the tumor or allowing them to migrate towards the tumor draining lymph node. And the other, I think, fully unresolved um, element that we need to understand and refine better is how do those myeloid compartments impact the induction of tracheal lymphoid structures and the maturation of tracheal lymphoid structures. Y using the myeloid compartment therapeutically is a very interesting one because there is a long-standing history of, of using dendritic cell-based vaccines intratrumorally or systemically to actually boost anti-tumor immune responses. But these vaccines have generally been underperformed compared to other therapies like checkpoint blockade immunotherapy. So I think one component we need to think about is, can those actually work as a single agent therapy, or do we have to use them to prime, in quote unquote, uh, anti-tumor immune responses and then combine it with T-cell targeting therapies. And I think it's still early days, but um, provoking stimulatory uh, myeloid cell compartments and uh, maintaining that stimulatory potential, I think, are the therapeutic avenues that are starting to emerge. I'm Elsa Agnostrom, an associate professor at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Uh, and uh, I lead a Cancer Research Institute sponsored trial to uh, understand uh, the role of liquid biopsies in informing clinical decisions in patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. One of the major points made today is that response to immune checkpoint blockade can be rather heterogeneous, and, and, and we know this in looking at um, uh, clinical data from several trials of uh, immune checkpoint uh, blockade uh, and taking melanoma uh, as, as an example, uh, there, there is a great heterogeneity in terms of responses. There's patients that um, have radiographically stable disease and maintain that stable disease over time. Uh, there's patients that progress uh, very shortly after treatment initiation, and there's certainly patients that um, attain uh, long-term uh, benefit from, from these therapies. Uh, what is interesting is that um, uh, the clinical outcome of, of, of patients with, with these different radiographic uh, responses uh, is, is actually quite diverse. Uh, and uh, this truly introduces, um, uh, introduces a, a, an issue which has to do with being able to dissect these heterogeneous uh, responses to checkpoint blockade. How can biomarkers uh, help here? How can mechanistic biomarkers help dissect this heterogeneity in, um, uh, in responses to, to, to cancer immunotherapy? Well, we heard several uh, several great presentations uh, today, uh, understanding the the underlying mechanism and and, and, and processes uh, that that mediate um, uh, 
an, an anti-tumor immune response. We heard about the SIGA um, uh, uh, sting, cytosolic DNA sensing, uh, uh, pathway that is involved in interferon gamma uh, responses, and, and certainly um, uh, gathered a lot of information that have to do with, um, uh, with, with putting together a sting-related uh, interactome. Now, how this um, reflects responses uh, potentially to immune checkpoint blockade, that remains to be seen. Can we uh, borrow information from, uh, from classic viral immunology uh, to, to interpret uh, this lesional heterogeneity, potentially response heterogeneity, uh, during immune checkpoint blockade? There are molecules like um, uh, XCR1 uh, that, that um, uh, are present in specific dendritic cells, and these can uh, promote um, and maintain a stem-like phenotype in CD8 T cells uh, by reducing exposure to viral antigens. So understanding the phenotype of, of the immune cells uh, present in the tumor microenvironment is extremely important. And, and of course, the, the question that remains to be answered here is uh, whether tumors that are differentially enriched in such dendritic cell uh, populations, whether these uh, differentially, re differentially respond uh, to, to, to tumor, to cancer immunotherapy. How about, how about features like uh, tumor necrosis? Again, we uh, learned today that uh, necrotic regions can be uh, quite heterogeneous. Uh, there is uh, a specific entity that was introduced, pleomorphic necrosis, and this is what is enriched in a specific phenotype, uh, phenotypic population of, uh, of neutrophils. And these are vascularly uh, restricted uh, neutrophils that uh, their association with, um, uh, with anti-tumor immune response uh, remains to, to be seen, but certainly very important to, to consider uh, the, the diversity of, uh, of immune cell subsets. And certainly, uh, even if we don't know the mechanism of, uh, of response and resistance, right, by dissecting the immune cell populations, there is a lot that liquid biopsies can, um, uh, can offer uh, and, assist, and assist us in terms of interpreting responses to immune checkpoint blockade, liquid biopsy is being a more uh, uh, accurate um, uh, assay to, to, to determine responses to, to, to immunotherapy can be used in clinical decision making uh, in terms of escalation or de-escalation uh, approaches um, in when immunotherapy either fails or, or succeeds. And so there is a lot of value in looking at circulating cell-free tumor DNA dynamics as uh, an early endpoint of response to, to immune checkpoint blockade. And, and, and via these approaches, we can truly um, uh, understand, uh, better understand the heterogeneity uh, of, of response to immune checkpoint blockade and, for, for instance, focus on, um, uh, on uh, patient subsets with, with stable disease and use liquid biopsies and ctDNA approaches to understand the kinetics of the tumor burden that is mirrored in uh, clinical outcomes with immune checkpoint blockade. It was uh, a great uh, debate on mouse uh, versus human uh, immunology and certainly uh, both the mouse models and then uh, studying humans have their own uh, benefits and, and, and certainly uh, there is a lot of synergies. Um, in terms of why using uh, mouse models, certainly mouse models are very informative in uh, understanding relevant biology for, for human samples. Um, they are uh, important in understanding the coevolution of immune cells and cancer cells are also important when we put together these time course experiments and uh, we're interested in analysis between time points, again, in understanding the coevolution of the cancer cells and the immune cells. Um, and uh, it, it may also be a, a, a practical, for practical reasons, uh, that, that, that mouse models uh, are, are important as for um, uh, most of the times we may not have the human derived materials needed to perform uh, such analysis in um, uh, and, and model anti-tumor uh, immune responses. Certainly mouse models can help us move from correlation to causation um, 
and can also help with uh, addressing fundamental questions uh, that have to do with, uh, that, that can be involved in early drug discovery or early drug uh, development where testing in humans certainly is, 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 not, um, uh, is, is not doable. Now, why humans, why, why, why focus on, on, on human uh, uh, immunology? Well, certainly animal, animal models, they do not capture uh, the diversity of the human host. They're non-scalable. One has to employ a reductionist approach in studying mouse models where they kind of focus on a very nuanced question. Uh, and and, and, and these, the mouse model approaches may be more uh, very narrow uh, in scope, but we have to recognize the diversity of, of, the, human, of the human host. So the, 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 the human host diversity cannot be captured by, by single or even few uh, mouse models that we may have available. And then there is a lot of criticism that has to do with the new mi mouse models that are emerging and that are not very well characterized. So how well uh, can we actually uh, model immune responses by, um, uh, by using those mouse models? Certainly. Um, the integrative approaches and learning from each system is, is, is important. Um, and uh, an, an idea that came up and was discussed uh, during the debate was um, that of potential future steps, including uh, the following, kind of creating models based on the evolution of, uh, of, of tumors as they, and cancer cells as these undergo bottlenecks imposed by, by immune checkpoint blockade. From today's sessions at SciCon 22, the take-home message is that there is tremendous diversity in, in all the different elements uh, determining immune responses, being the, the T cell compartment, the B cell compartment, NK, dendritic cell uh, compartment. And we need to understand this diversity to interpret cancer immunology, especially in the context of, of cancer immunotherapy. And, and you know, a question that was posed is, what is the way forward to, to, to enhance lab to clinic to lab uh, this, this, this cycle? And the consensus seemed to be, and I very much agree, that forward and reverse translation, um, integration of human and mouse immunology, um, uh, this is important, always uh, focusing on answering specific uh, cancer-focused questions.